So tonight is all about the sisters, but that doesn't mean that the sisters can't honor the brothers and Tony, you're not looking at me, Minister Ince. <laughs> I didn't know if you knew you were next. Um, so the sisters and the brothers have to stand together in our communities as well, men and women. We celebrate and honor women. That doesn't mean that we can't also acknowledge the work that the men do to hold us down, the work we do holding them down, and representing the brothers on the stage tonight, uh, the Honorable Minister Tony Ince, who's just, I don't know, every time I see you, I'm like, you're a minister, but you have swag. <laughs> so, uh, and also, I say that also because I know when he went into the election, people were saying, oh, you know, he's running against the premier. And then just to have, you know, an ordinary guy in our community run against the sitting premier and win, I think that just inspired a lot of, particularly the young men in our community, to so say, like, wait a minute, who I am is good enough. I can be who I want to be. So I think that was an inspiring moment for our community as well. So... The Honorable Tony Ince is Nova Scotia's Minister of Communities, Culture, and Heritage, and African Nova Scotian Affairs. He was elected as an MLA in 2013 for the constituency of Coal Harbor, Portland Valley. Minister Ince was born and raised in the north end of Halifax, Nova Scotia. Okay. Uh -huh. I was seeing if people were going to clap. In addition to working for the Department of Community Services as a youth and family counselor, he has chaired the African Canadian Advisory Board for the Nova Scotia Community College and is a past member of the African Nova Scotian Advisory Committee for the Halifax Regional School Board, also a drummer who's honored us in the past. Please welcome to the stage the Honorable Tony Ince. Good evening, everyone. It is truly an honor to be here in the presence of all these great women. Strong black women. Three words that sustain a community. Three words that strike fear into the hearts of the average black man. There are many strong black women throughout our history and across our country who deserve to be honored, who deserve our deepest gratitude. I'm very proud of my community. As an African Nova Scotian man, I've been influenced by many women in my life, not just from my community, but from all women. But there are two I need to single out. I have to take a special opportunity to speak from a very personal place. Pace, place. I've been blessed to have two exceptional black women in my life. My mother, Thelma Coward Ince, and my aunt, Clotilda Yakmachuk. Both are from Whitney Pier. Both are daughters of immigrants who came to Cape Breton to work in the steel mine. As sisters, Thelma and Clotilda are similar in many ways and very different in other ways. Thelma was the one, was the first black woman in the Canadian Navy, she rose through the ranks at the Department of National Defense to become the leading safe, uh, to become a leading safety officer. I'm a bit nervous. I've never been so nervous until tonight. <laughs> Estrin, it is good. Not for me, though. <laughs> Okay, I only have five minutes. <laughs> okay. Now, she also became the leading safety officer at the Halifax shipyards and later the human resources director at the Halifax shipyards. If I told you how old she was, she would disown me, so we won't go there. 
So I'll just say that given the time of her accomplishments, my mother was truly a trailblazer. She was a single mother of two and a constant volunteer involved in many numerous organizations and she was politically involved. I won't tell you which party, but I can tell you it wasn't the right party. <laughs> Sorry, David. <laughs> Nobody's perfect, though. <laughs> My Aunt Clotilda Yakimachuk became the first black graduate of the Nova Scotia Hospital School of Nursing in 1954. She later became nursing supervisor, then director of staff development, and later director of educational services. She was the first black president and registered of the Registered Nurses Association. And guess what? She remains the only black president in the organization's 100-year history. And she did all of this while being respected and a community activist. As a founding president of the Black Community Development Organization while leading the fight for affordable housing and low income in Cape Breton, she had accomplished that as well. And she did all of this while being a young widow and raising five children on her own. Clotilda's numerous awards and recognitions include the Order of Canada, the Queen's Diamond Jubilee Medal, and the Honorary Doctorate. And that's just a short version of my mother and my aunt. On a more personal note, through through their attitudes and actions, both women built protective walls around their children and worked hard to keep oppression out and empowerment in. Both women were forces of nature, but they have very different approaches. Clotilda is a soothing healer. Thelma is a fierce warrior. Clotilda's discipline, uh, disciplined her children with calm discussions. <laughs> Thelma often reminded us, I brought you into the world, I can take you out. <laughs> I love them both dearly, and I admire them immensely. Like so many strong black women in my community, their accomplishments can stand proud on their own. But they shine so much better in the face of so many struggles. To fully appreciate them, we need to acknowledge Canada's black women have carried that double burden of racism and sexism. We need to salute the way they have managed the demands of work and family under horrible social conditions. Jesus, sweat is just pouring off of me. I'm terrified. <laughs> okay. We need to also appreciate the emotions they have suppressed, sadness, grief, frustration, and anger in the process of, of appearing strong. And I've seen that in the, some of the women here in the audience who have had those leadership roles. Doctor. We need to give them thanks for the many sacrifices they have made. Yes, we need to celebrate Canada's strong black women. Personally, I thank them for changing our country, for me and my generation. But mostly, I thank them for changing our country for my daughter, Yakira. The trails they blazed 
have made walking easier for my daughter. The doors they forced open made entering easier for my daughter. The burdens they carried have light, lightened the weight on my daughter's shoulders. Because of the legacies of women like Thalma Cowardance and Clotilde Yakmachuk, my hope is that my daughter, Yakira, won't have to be perpetually tough. She won't have to be uniquely indescribable. She won't have to be a tower of strength. She can just be herself. Thank you.